All yeah. right. Well, Should let's, we do one more here? Let's do one more on this Buffalo Bills, and let's wrap this thing up with talking about LaShawn McCoy. Allegations. Man, Allegations. What? So there's a ton <laughs> going on with LaShawn McCoy. And really what started this uh, conversation with LaShawn McCoy was just figuring out where the hell to put him in a, in a rankings or when or when you should not draft him. Um, is he too old? Is the situation in Buffalo too uh, bleak here? So I guess the question is, is, are you putting McCoy on your team in any circumstance? Um, and are you are you trying to trade him? Are you trying to acquire him? W what kind of... Uh, we, uh, you can't trade him right now. You I certainly can't trade him. You, well, I mean, I saw some uh, on the on the Dynasty League Football's website. They'll show you some trades, and obviously, they take that for what you you know. Those might those are home leagues and this and that and cheap leagues. I'd like to see FFPC. I'd like to see high you know high expensive leagues type stuff trades for Lashawn McCoy. I would be looking to buy him on the super cheap. I wouldn't be selling him on the super cheap, even if I only get one more season up. But yeah, you can't. If, you got to ride it out. You got to ride out that potential volume. Sure, things might not be beautiful over there in Buffalo, but last, let's. I mean, he was second in the league with attempts last year, two hundred eighty-seven. Right. He was eighth in running back targets with seventy-seven. Right. Um, Seventh in snaps where he was running routes with three hundred and twenty-six. And you know, yeah, he's thirty, but he just turned thirty, and it like. You know, it's, you're not going to go from a volume high-end workhorse one season and, ch and and not be good the next year just because you had a birthday. And if maybe you can go from a high-end volume one year and not be good the next year, but not if you're like a Pro Bowl, Hall of Fame type caliber guy. Right. Like LaShawn McCoy is not going to be a lesser quarter lesser running back next year to a degree with enough. no substantial injury that's or what anything I'm, yeah, crazy happening nothing happened nothing changed except for a couple of months on the calendar it was only a couple months and i said this a couple weeks ago six months ago this guy wasn't finishing up a 287 carry season where he got 1140 yards six touchdowns and 50 something catches and i mean and a couple more touchdowns through the air and you got a high end rb1 so like yeah as far as i'm not selling cheap i'd love to buy cheap and just bolster some you know some depth I'm still question. What's the? Do we have a startup ADP? Uh, my my, you my ADP slow thing over is, there? is moving, creeping at a snail's pace. Well, I'm I'm not necessarily I mean, it's 57, right? Yeah. So there's no chance I'm buying. I'm spending a, a fourth or a fifth round. Four is four nah. times twelve is forty eight. So fifth. That's mid mid to the end of the fifth. There's still too many good. Play I'm I'm not going to buy a thirty year old running back. Nah. In the and fifth I think round. with all the stuff kind of going on over there and it's all the slip. all the all the grim circumstances in Buffalo and then the allegations of whatever the hell he's got going on. Right. He, he well, and, and when we've done the mocks, he slipped way down. He has slipped. He keeps falling. Good we're, point. We're, we're thinking about it and and we're like talking about well, we could take Lashawn here. We could take Lashawn here, and and. But any, I, I don't think he ever got my vote. I don't know that I could ever really say, all right, I want to take LaShawn McCoy here. Because I, I, I understand that he just was awesome last year and he was a running back one. He's been awesome for years and years and years. That's true. That's true. But he is 30. He's been one of the best for years and years and years. He's 30, and there's there's a there's a string of 30-plus-year-olds sure. who have ran for over 1,000 yards. Um, they're some of the best in the game. But he himself is one of the best in the game so i don't want to just say that because he's 30 it's time to bail but i am a proponent of bailing like a year too early than a year too late sure and yeah but like, the problem with bail i mean maybe in the startup adp is fine but bailing in any other sense of the word is is you're not going to get enough to make it make sense to bail. right if i have him right i get it if i have him i'm with you i'm not trying to I'm not trying to bail having him but when i'm on the clock in a startup like especially you know with the 57 ADP between 51 and 71 this is the string of running backs that you could take instead of him right Derrick Henry Alex Collins Carrion Johnson Tevin Coleman Kenyon Drake Jay Ajayi Tariq Cohen and Deion Lewis maybe 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 we have a discussion between LaShawn and Jay Ajayi and Cohen and Deion Lewis but I there's think no way I, I'm taking I don't think Derrick Henry should be on that list well he's a 51 right so I just I just I took a slew of running backs that are around where before and after mm -hmm. LaShawn McCoy's going, I'd rather have pretty much all those guys than than LaShawn McCoy. Right. Um, uh, but but I mean, I know I could still probably I, I could probably still get an RB one season out of LaShawn. But these allegations, right? 
the, it's it's well, child abuse, it's domestic abuse, and it's some PED right. like suspicions here. I guess my thing, and you're innocent until proven guilty, right. but not necessarily in the NFL. Well, they don't need proof. And, but the to thing suspend is, suspend you for character. A lot of the times in the NFL, when stuff like this does go down, it's going to take at least a year to figure out whether or not he should be suspended or not. Even if there is no legal ramifications I mean, maybe, to what happens, but probably it, it's not like he failed a test or anything like that. There's all sorts of court and everything to go through, like the stuff that the. Ezekiel Elliott got suspended for something that happened a year ago. Yeah, yeah. when he got suspended. I mean, suspended. but they are trying to like, get this ahead is, of this stuff. And this move is gonna faster. this is gonna take a little while to, to sort out. Even if he, if he now if he gets in trouble, sure, there could be he could be out of there. So that that's for sure something right. to take. And into who knows account. if any of it's true? But like, I mean, the NFL doesn't need proof. Like I said, and right. But if they don't it have proof, what I'm saying is that it takes it's it's gonna take. You're, you're, it's probably not gonna happen through this season for him being having any ramifications. Pro- that probably way. not. But for me, when I'm on the clock in that startup, I just I can't I can't do it. It's just too much so of a risk. Here's for me. here's the thing with that. Let's say you're you have a running back, you're weak at running back through the rest of this draft. You've done what you're you know, whatever you did and you didn't get enough running backs <laughs> and you're in there and you, that list of running backs is there. I think I would exclude Derrick Henry from that mix. But a lot of those other guys, we like them. We like them a whole lot. I like a lot of those guys in that list. But number one. A lot of those guys probably aren't getting the opportunities that LaShawn McCoy is about to get. What's going on? We just talked about the dumpster fire that is uh, Buffalo. Buffalo. He's still going to see the volume I don't think is going down at all. Nope. If he's available, it's not going but, down. Right. If he's available, the volume's not going down. And then maybe the success is not as as good. But Right. You don't have Tyrod there threatening to sure, keep the ball on those read options. Semi mobile quarterback anymore and you did lose some pieces along the offensive line here you lost yeah, you lost some big time pieces. you lost incognito and you lost woods who you know wood to center right was a solid player but he gets replaced by russell bodine from the uh the Bengals there uh they did lose cordy glenn but he didn't play that much last year mm-hmm. Good um, point. And, he's and, solid but he didn't play and they had their their left tackle uh dawkins filled in very strong last year, which made Glenn then expendable. Gotcha. Um, and they so they they got Russell Bodine, who didn't play particularly well, but hasn't missed a game in forever, and is potential to be a pretty solid starter. And he's good depth for them. Then they have Ryan Groy, who is battling Bodine for the center, but he's been like their all star backup, can play any utility, any fielder spot yep. on that uh, interior of that line. So there's some decent pieces to replace kind of what's going on it may not be as good as it was but it may not be absolutely atrocious the right side is maybe not as but from left tackle left guard and left center uh vlad i don't even know how to pronounce it do du, do du, du, i don't know how to pronounce his name but he's the left guard he's kind of been up and down his whole career but he's not awful he's not god awful so the left side of this line should be half decent the right side we don't really know what's going to go on it's jordan mills maybe he's good and the right guard is miller uh they, they they could step up and be okay so maybe it's not quite as bad as it as it looked on paper for but you could the offensive line pieces. but overall you're saying it's not quite it's not what it was but even if it isn't as what it was and him being getting he's still going to get the volume he's still going to see receptions out of the backfield yeah. like and he's still going to bre- like shady's going to be shady gonna get most 200. likely and he's probably going to break a couple of runs here or there he's going to get in the end zone so let's just say you drafted a team who doesn't have a ton of running back depth that you can believe in why like why not take a shot on a guy who is I, and I don't want to say nothing's for sure, but I would pretty much guarantee that if McCoy plays 16 games, he's going to at least be an RB2. And oh, if, in the middle of the pack RB2, Todd Gurley in 15 or in 16 was RB15, and that was like he was left for dead. The Vultures were circling him. He had yeah. the worst year ever. And it's terrible. And there's there's no chance there, that if I he I don't plays, think his offense will be any worse than what the Rams had going on. Yeah, he's going to get 250 carries. He's going to catch about 50 balls, and that's going to be an RB1 season. Like, if he's playing, if he's played 16 games, like, there's no chance he's not an RB1 in my eyes. You said he, maybe, yeah, maybe 15, he's maybe RB15 in 13 or 14. Yeah, he's. He's up there. He's up there for sure. He's he's going to be catching as many balls as you want as your RB2 satellite backs, and he's going to get 250 Right, which carries. is what a lot of those guys you named, are. You, this is what you're trying to get out of right. those guys at their top I end, can see and you're going to get the volume from McCoy. To Jay, to Jay Wayne's point, I'm prob- I, even if I have a questionable running back set up this, to this point in my draft, I probably can't take McCoy over on Johnson. 
Uh, probably nope. can't make that stab, but some of the other guys, I could see that happening. It's but yeah, no, but you probably don't just, have these, to. These other fairness. guys just have like arrows going up on them, and no McCoy's doubt. got an arrow going down. Uh, and and even even if let's say even but if, not like, for one season, even possibly. if McCoy even if McCoy gets the Larry Fitzgerald treatment and he's still RB one for he's still thirty years old. He just turned thirty, so this time next year he'd just be turning thirty one. Like it's not the end of the line. It's not unheard of, but he does have a ton of touches ton of tackles on his resume it, you know he's got he's got 2187 attempts in his career which is crazy good frank gore's got like over a thousand more than him though. yeah yeah well but frank the Gore's last, a different breed i mean i don't i in mean in the last three years you didn't want frank gore in your lineup unless you had to have <laughs> who are you him talking to i've been starting frank gore for years now yeah well, what kind of success so I mean, I, was, I mean, but McCoy's been a high end asset year. for for the last couple of years, and I'm I'm not saying that I necessarily want to take him over these guys. I'm just making a case for Lashawn McCoy. I've been in these same drafts with you guys, and I didn't really want to take McCoy yeah. either. Right. But when you look at it from a standpoint of trying to win games from week to week in this particular calendar year, yeah. Well, yeah, and you I, could probably still get a guy like Carryon Johnson and get. I mean, maybe not because Carryon's been lighting the world on fire recently. Yeah, mm, you'd be better off taking Carryon first and then drafting Lashawn Le- Le- right. McCoy. But I mean, some of those guys you could probably get both of mm-hmm. of McCoy and, and have a solid player for this year and have a solid guy behind him. Uh, yeah, uh, just making the point for McCoy. Yeah. It's, and it's, just, I'm never gonna need McCoy in that startup. I'm gonna be taking those running backs early. I'm not gonna be to the point where like, oh man, I need some running back. But everyone, li- here everyone the- listening isn't. Yeah, so, that's good well, points on both sides. I, to me, uh, yeah, it's hard to take the 30 year old running back into startup unless he falls to a point where I'm like, okay, I can't take it anymore. Got to put him on my team. And at Jay Wayne's point, and every time put we've a been in the mock draft, it pretty much happens like that. He continues to fall and fall and fall. Yeah, and then but then you're weighing like, all right, I well, know. do I want this it's, guy or that guy? It's, it's the youth and the arrows pointing up that sure, makes right. you want to not take Lashawn McCoy. I'm just simply and then these allegations, that, these the, the sure. looming suspension, and the NFL doesn't care about proof. Like may, maybe you have a good point there. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you don't see anything stem from this until next year. Unless right. unless some unless he really unless there's some. Yeah, you know, hard evidence, and he does get in trouble. He's right. probably out of here. All we know is that he's allowed to be at training camp right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. It's like the the what you the it's risk the unknown the risk it's added risk the to risk it. in the Old reward. Running back. The risk is double time now because of the allegations. You just don't know. And there's even in that range, there's still would what, what you're going to give up. The opportunity cost to drafting somebody else. Like I get everything what Casey's saying, and sometimes his name is popping off the page if he falls far enough. Sometimes his name is popping off the page, and I get it. But there's still you still look at that guy. Well, what if I could take I could take McCoy here, but then I had to pass up on this guy. Or I could take McCoy here, and then I had to pass up on this guy. You know, like a somebody that's going to a round and a half past him is like uh, you know my boy Robert Woods. There's no chance I can take Lashawn McCoy if Robert Woods is still on the board. But then you can say, oh well, there's 17 other wide receivers I'd rather have, right. and then running backs. That's because you need a wide receiver at that point because you already made yourself yeah. good at running back well let's let me say this before i because I, I thought of this while y'all casey was t- talking i didn't want to cut him off like i would sell mccoy off of my current roster for a, a first next year i would anything less than that i'm holding and i'm riding it nobody's out. giving you that we, i know we, i'm just we've, saying we've been in drafts we've been all around drafts we've offered mccoy for every pick in, uh, in basically in the first round what i'm drafts. trying it's not yes yeah, obviously i'd say i would accept it but basically it's the i'm saying i'm not accepting anything less than that so anybody that wants to hit me with a next year's two, to t- I'm just uh, allegations or not, I'm just gonna hold out yeah. because next year's two, I can come up with plenty of next year's twos. Right, I'm, totally with you. If you want to give me a ne- McCoy, if you want to give me a next year's first, I'm listening. Right, and I'll put that in the bank. But other than that, I right. gotta ride out McCoy and see what happens. And then you know, obviously, the team that I have him on in specifically. If uh, that was that's one of the you know teams that world would have to come to an end for me not to make the playoffs because it's just a good team and he's on the bench he's not even in my starting lineup which feels amazing but if McCoy's on your team and you're like oh well I only got some bill some some low offers in the off season just like the Gronk thing like if your team's not going anywhere then obviously you want to wait till McCoy's crushed and he has a two or three touchdown game try to ship him off and get as much as you can for him don't be stubborn about it but if you have a chance to make some noise Sean McCoy is going to help there's not there's only so many of those guys that's going to get 250 carries and maybe 50 catches right and that, not I mean, a lot of them. and that's my point is like i don't not, again i'm not saying i'm drafting with sean mccoy really by any means but i think there's a role to be played and he could be a decent piece for your team in a startup even though it doesn't feel great to pull the trigger he could be valuable points every week getting you into the 
money area of this playoffs. And at the end of the day, you're trying to win games. Yeah. And I can find younger talent to take chances on throughout the rest of this draft here. If the dice rolls out the right way, there is a there is a spot where LaShawn McCoy could be taken. You know. And again, you know, carry on Johnson right now. You can't trade LaShawn McCoy for the spot where I'm drafting carry on Johnson Not in the rookie close. draft. I'm yep. drafting him at probably one five, maybe even one four now because Sony Michelle's had a knee procedure. Like that's where we have carry on Johnson in this process of the rookie draft kind of deal. And you just, if you're in a startup, it's not that much different to me. This is a pretty high startup pick for me in a rookie or in a rookie draft. So it's, you know, since I, I get March, that by the way, since March, I'm by glad the y'all way, changed. I used I, to get slack not, on this show I'm, about I'm, being I'm, like, well, I, I said it earlier in the, in the program, we're not really told you so kind of guys, but maybe in, late february early march casey's bringing you we had the adp episode casey's bringing you or we had the running backs episode and casey's bringing you carry on johnson at like one five one four in your rookie running backs and at that point carry on johnson was like one twelve two one on dlf adp and we were way way ahead of that curve just wanted to throw that out there now that carry on johnson's the flavor of the month you heard it here first folks right. absolutely Man, yeah, I mean, answer Deion Kane. Loving all these blurs. Oh, yeah. Kane. So much Deion Kane. Poured gas on the fire, will you? 